think a lot of the pressure that uh, I feel is self-imposed just because I want to do well and I want to perform well. I um, had a supervisor who was effectively my boss who was currently having anger management counseling. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, he'd be like picking up his phone and hitting it against the wall and I'd be like, well, that's not going to help the client at this moment so I could have would just assume this calm and this facade of calm would be presented to everyone. It's like 98 and 2. 98 percent comes from me, probably 2 percent comes from the outside. Pressure uh, for me now as a father, I and I, it's quite ironic as a as an athlete, you always associate pressure with race day performances or, or what you're feeling in the days before. But you know, it's so natural to me now. I've been a professional athlete for 20 years, and I actually enjoy that side of things. But the pressure of a father is is heavy, and uh, you know, I have three children, and and uh, I really understand now what my father was saying to me when I was a kid. And you, you hear yourself sounding more and more like your dad every day, and I think that's the pressure of fatherhood of family. I think becoming a, a parent, anyone will tell you who's a parent, it changes you. People always said to me, oh, it must have been so much more pressure when, when you, our daughter Lucy came along. Yeah, there's one more mouth to feed and I guess there's that aspect of it, but there's also the aspect of it and you hear people talk about it all the time that, you know, and this was driven home to me in no uncertain terms. That, when my daughter was eight weeks old, I won what was at the time the biggest prize purse in the history of the sport. You know, I was over the moon. I was a new dad, I was on an emotional high, I'd won this big race. You know, she didn't know that I'd won. Um, and I think that's when it, it, it really, it hits home that, that that sort of unconditional love you get as a parent. And, and my daughter's seven now and she's grown up around the sport and she's seen her dad win a lot and she's seen her dad lose. And, you know, She's probably the leader of the cheer squad. I feel a bigger um, load of pressure when it comes to showing my kids and my family of how to be an athlete, how to be a role model, how to be uh, a performer, how to be a sportsman. Because I was uh, a lawyer before I turned professional in triathlon, and that I came across a lot of really high pressure situations in, in that job. And I kind of learned a lot about how to deal with it because initially I'd be like a deer in the headlights. And, but that doesn't really help if you've got a client who wants something done in a, an hour's time. I worked for an investment bank for seven years and I saw these, these investment bankers, managing directors, just sure they make a litany of money, you know, but they work 100 hour weeks and such all day long. For me, I freak out if I can't make like a girl's dinner or a happy hour or my best friend throwing my best friend's baby shower, like that stuff is super important and when I start to lose that, I need to take a bird's eye view at my life and something needs to go. And so telling my Ohio parents my 60-hour work week was going to go to be a pro triathlete was a little risk and to this day it was the best risk I've ever taken. The first thing that comes to mind when I hear pressure is Kona. Um, that's probably for most athletes the biggest race and then the most important one so um, yeah, that's the one where I feel the most pressure, but also it's the most the one that I feel the most excited about and and the one I train for and, and can't wait for. I don't know if it's the mindset in person. 
about pressure or if they can just if they have the ability to, to push it aside you know push all the out, outside interference away from them away from themselves and just focus on what they need to do to get get the job done. Pressure's not a big deal to me. Um, then I'm not like the reigning Kona champion, so I don't, I think just for that reason, I don't have a lot of pressure uh, or expectation on me uh, as opposed to some other athletes. There's no doubt. I mean, you're only human. You're going to feel pressure. You're going to feel expectation. You know, I think it's fair to say a lot of athletes, the expectation they put on themselves is greater than the external pressures or expectation, and, and I'm no different to that. No one can be your biggest critic but yourself. You know what work you've done. You know how well you've done it. You know if you've left any stones unturned. And I think we're all sort of striving for perfectionism. That's a personality that all of us as triathletes share in common. I'm still really hungry to get back to Kona. It's what I'm thinking about all day, every day. I don't know. The, the big, bigger the race, the more I can get out of myself, the more excited I am to race. I mean, you put me in a race where there's a lot on the line, where all the big names are there, where, you know, seemingly impossible things people tell you, and especially when people tell me you can't win or you're not quick enough or you're too small. Um, you tell me those things and I'll find a way to prove you wrong. You know, pressure is a funny word. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, you know, it's probably the wrong word when, when I think of how I go about things. I think uh, responsibility is a better word. And, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I take on the responsibilities of a father and a professional athlete very, very seriously. You know, the foundation of a great outcome or success, whatever you want to call it, it, it starts months and months before race day. And it's a two-fold thing. Not only does that prepare you, I think, physically for the race, I think it prepares you mentally, knowing that you've done what you can. And that takes away a lot of the pressure. 